So, the last safety consideration is try not to use a pen when you're measuring your elongations. Could you could get a little too close and catch us on the spinning wheel? But just like last week, we want to measure our elongations with the center of this brass cylinder. Match it up to the ruler that's conveniently taped on for you. Try to get it to two decimal places, do your best. And then with the frequency, with the frequency, if you're tall, you can look right over it. If you're short, you can bend this down to you. Now, each frequency that you'll measure from here, keep in mind that each division will be five revolutions per minute. Five. So your delta RPM, your reading error, will be half of that 2.5. We want our first elongation to be 15 centimeters. And then we want to go a half a centimeter below that each time. 14.5, 14.13.5. Now, you perfectionists can drive yourself crazy with this one. Just ballpark it. If you, you know, if, if you get 15.51, you know, then get that with the corresponding frequency. It's not individual points that we're concerned with. It's the linear regression and the slope from it. So on each of the setup is a number here. Now this should be the frequency of around 15 centimeters. So you want to make sure that you're set to that number. In my case it's 385, so let me just double check here. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Good. So when I turn on the cylinder, when I turn on the spin, it's this knob here. And all you do is you turn to the right, make it go faster, turn to the left, make it go slower. Uh, some say it's not a bad idea when you first turn it on, turn it on to 25 volts and then slowly ease down until you find your, until you match it with your frequency. We'll know we're right when it appears stationary to us. When it's stationary, it means that the frequency of the strobe light is matching the frequency of the spinning cylinder. So, time for the light now. All right, all right. So I'm going to turn this on, but we have to make note of one more thing. When we adjust this, when we adjust this, don't use this black knob here. Use this outer knob, this outer knob here. Ready to turn on the power. Oh, more power. Faster. Ah, okay. Okay, so look. So how cool is that? That appears stationary. So I'm going to tinker with the outer rim knob. I can use the knob to make finer adjustments than the black voltage knob. And I'm going to position it to where it's right in front of me. And then I can take a measurement. Uh, 14.94. And then I read the corresponding frequency. Uh, 3.78. And then that's as easy as that. That's the first point. And then I turn down the voltage and turn down the strobe light to find my second point, 14.5, around there. Read that at 14.5, around there, and then read the frequency, and then so on, down a half a centimeter each time. Now, a common mistake is this. A common mistake is this. To only get half the frequency. Around right to this. In other words, it appears stationary, but what's happening is it's oscillating. Like if you look at the ruler, the ruler is bouncing back and forth. So that's only half of what we need. So be careful with that one. And then last but not least, you might be thinking, you might be fooling yourself to think that this is stationary. 
And you might be, oh, I can now stick my fingers in that. But look at that. Look at that. It's an optical illusion. No, no, no. It's still spinning. It's still spinning. So just keep that in mind. Be safe, students. Find your data. Good luck with Hook's Law Part 2. Thank you.